for most people, it's happy, it's fantastic, it's uh, a positive thing. And then you have a small number of um, patients who have a, a, an outcome that's not so happy. Eva was born at 24 weeks and six days. She was 820 grams, one pound 13. Basically got the fright of our lives. We went into this unknown world. We weren't sure what was happening. Was she going to make it? Her skin was see-through. She was so small, red. And um, I remember saying it out loud to one of the nurses, how, how is she going to turn into a baby? She said, just give her time. She just needs to grow. The smallest baby I ever looked after was 445 grams. A pound of butter is 454. So that'll tell you now how small. They need help with their breathing. They're attached to ventilators. They have drips because they're not able to feed when they start first. They're very, very fragile. Then they can't take the baby out and cuddle it. You know, that's very hard for a parent to feel they can't hold their own baby. And for a parent coming in to that, like, it is just horrendous and they don't know whether that baby's going to live or die. The neonatal intensive care unit, or neonatal unit, is where babies are cared for in Cork University Maternity Hospital if they're born early, small, or sick. It's an area of the hospital that nobody really plans to be in. It's sometimes events happen uh, unexpectedly where babies need some extra care. We like to remember that we're caring not just for the medical conditions of these little babies, but these little babies in the context of a family. We want to sort of designate some of the space within our unit for the parents of babies, where they can literally have a little bit of time away from the bedside, but still on the unit, a comfortable place to sit, perhaps to make a cup of tea, to just have some solace away from what at times can be a bustling, noisy, busy, critical care environment. We started out in intensive care for the first nine weeks. In total, we were there for 132 days. She is three since um, June, and she's absolutely fantastic. You wouldn't even know the journey she went through or put us through. Um, she's amazing. The other part of the proposal is what we call the Santum. Every month there would be a small number of babies, uh, one or two babies, where we know that Unfortunately, we won't have the happy outcome uh, of mum and baby leaving together, but babies whose care and needs are so complex that they may not survive. We have the opportunity within the very heart of our building, on the ground floor, adjacent to our unit, the opportunity to create a santum, a space where we can provide a brief uh, period of supported time for the baby and family to be under the sky. Let's have an appropriate building or structure that allows that to be done with uh, sensitivity and dignity and privacy. The baby has been born in the maternity hospital and is, has spent its entire short life in the neonatal intensive care unit. Wouldn't it be wonderful, just for a few minutes, to look to the sky? And, and I think the design that the architects come up with captures all that. Parents and the baby can walk up a little ramp which is protected in terms of privacy by these rods. The neonatal sanctum then uh, will be heated, it will be warm with seats, but uh, it won't be a see-through except at the top. We would believe that this sanctum for that small number of babies provides us a unique opportunity to demonstrate tangibly to that baby, family, and our wider healthcare community and the community we serve that we are placing their care, not just their treatment, but their care at the very center of what we do.
I mean, we're making a statement for those parents. We're saying, look, we absolutely are committed to you. I'm sure they will get some consolation from the fact that they were cared for in their moment of uh, loss. I look at Eva and I think, we have her. There are some parents that don't have their babies. That could be us. It's not us. It could be us. So we should thank our lucky stars that it's not us.